day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I don't mind at all. Praise God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. And we just thank you for who you are, dear Father. We thank you, Jesus, for being the, 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 the that lovely son of God who made a way possible for, for all of mankind to, to have an intimate relationship with the Father. Dear Jesus, you are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our King. And thank you for being that perfect example, dear Jesus. Thank you for caring uh, enough for, about us that uh, that you left all of those treasures in heaven that we can't even fathom, but you left all of that to come to this this world and to, to make that way. And I, as often it is said, that impossible way. Without you, it wasn't impossible. Now it, it has been made possible. And we just thank you, dear Jesus, in your precious name. Dear, dear Holy Spirit that is in us, Continue to influence us in a, in a spiritually positive way. Uh, continue to help us to renew our minds daily and throughout the day so that we can walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. Yes. Lord, it's challenging. You know it. You see what's happening in our world today, not just here in the United States, but all across this creation. The Lord, we know that for those of us that have faith and, and endure and, and keep that stamina, that there is a reward. And we just thank you, dear Father, for that that hope that you, you've given us in your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for the, the shed blood. Yes. That was poured out, that has made us clean. Yes. And Lord, help us to be a part of that great commission, to be effective according to the will of the Father. And we say these things, Jesus, in your precious and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. And you know, the title I have today, it is always to provoke Brother Addison and somebody else <laughs> to, to look at. But it, it's worth it. I'm going to share this and we'll let uh, Brother Jackson get some word in before he leaves. Uh, the title is, let me see if I can get it right. Is this sharing, Brother Jackson? You see the slides? Yes, it is. Okay. Let me get this one this right away. This, the title is called, We Are, Brother, Jack, Brother Addison and Brother Jackson, the title is called, We Are Transforming into, the, into His Dear Son Image Instead of the Devil's Children. Mm -hmm. The, the point is that we talked earlier about the atrocities we're seeing in the legal system. Uh, atrocities have occurred even in history with like the Roman Empire. That, that's, that's the children of the devil uh, as far as conforming to his will, you know, conforming yeah. to the world system. Yeah. But there is a responsibility of the church to live according to God's way and not conform to the way of the world. And mm -hmm. it's so tempting sometimes because of atrocities to really try to do the same thing they did or try to hate opposed to, you know, saying, look, we're not going to respond the same way, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to respond, Brother Addison. It's just how we respond and respond in love. So did we read in first Peter chapter uh, two, and it's and make sure I got the right beginning. One second. Okay. One second. Let me let me check for something. I'll make sure I got it right. Okay. There. It's first Peter chapter two, sign to verse one. Okay. And you got a slide for the people that's listening, you got your Bible, you want to keep up with us, because it's hard for me to show it to you. Let me see if I can swing it over to the I don't think they can read it. Nope, you can't read it. But you can, but they can't see it. Go ahead. Okay. So 1 Peter chapter 2, 
verse one through seven of the first set of slides. Amen. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built upon a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Amen. Now, uh, Brother Addison, you, you see that. You, if you want, to, you want to comment on that first, or, or you want to chew on that for a second? Um, about the stone. I like that that one part about that or living stone right what what the, when you when y'all see that word living stone to you what does that mean well the living stone you know jesus being the you know that uh that 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 cornerstone and that i, I guess when we say that something is alive Yes, sir. Something that is, uh, he, he, he moves, he has effect, he yeah. has inspiration on us. And the fact that he's a stone, that's, you know, that metaphor that we use to say that something is, is, is uh, not just concentrated, but, you know, how we all kind of look at something that um, is steadfast and that you can stand on. Yes. And that in the in the time of a challenge, you know, it's it's there, you know, you know that that that's it's you got that stability. Yes. And so um, Jesus being that that living stone, we know that irregardless as to what's happening in society, come on, uh, and with us personally, that if we are standing upon Him, yes that we should be able to handle even when we get confused and you know that in the scripture there we talk about being confounded even when we get confused because we're going to see things in a you know in a in a worldly way that's you know we're still in our flesh and bones but when we put uh when we decide to get back into the faith when we try to look from th at things spiritually we get that discernment that can only come from the revelation. You know, when we go back to when Jesus asked the disciples, who, who do you, you know, you say that I am. And, Ooh, and then yes. finally Peter said, you know, you are the Christ, the Messiah. Yes. Again, Jesus stated, man didn't tell you that. That was the spirit. And that's kind of how we, I think we need to be when it comes to, you know, Christ as that living stone. The revelations that we get from the spirit, the revelation that we get from knowing Christ intimately, knowing the Father intimately, we're gonna see things differently. Yes, you know, another thing too I wanted to throw there is that he's the chief cornerstone, which means there's other stones, mm -hmm. and those stones are you. Mm -hmm. We are the living stones as well. Mm -hmm. Because remember what it said when Peter got that revelation, Brother Addison, and, and it says, Flesh and blood did not re reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. And now I'm going to call you, Simon, Peter, mm. because you're now a small rock. I'm, and I think, the, I think it's Petra and Petra. Peter became a living stone, solid with the revelation of God. And all of us are living stones with Jesus Amen. Christ being the chief cornerstone, make us more solid than we were before. And therefore, when you look at verse one, and I hope you got your Bible with you, because I, I can bring it back up for you to see. It doesn't, uh -huh. you can't see it. But 
the point is, laying aside, starting off when we were talking about earlier today, of the atrocities that's going on, you, you see what verse 1 is saying. Wherefore, laying aside, verse 1, all malice and all gal and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn, as newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, right? Amen. Amen. And, 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 you know, for him being gracious, he also wants us to be gracious. And I'm saying is that we, I think that the, hey, Chris, I think the, I think the whole point of it is that if we, as we move forward, is that we address atrocities, we address injustice, but we don't, we don't become what we hate. We become defenders of trying to change things, but not with the malice that goes with it. Does that make, make sense? Well, I think that this is likened unto Jesus is the head and we are the body. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that, you know, in, in relations to Christ being the chief cornerstone, also uh, that we are we are likened to a living stone. Yes, sir. You know, that that's a, a solid yes. substance. But because it is alive. Yes that it can therefore uh, have have uh, knowledge yes and 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 grow spiritual yes so um, I, I, I I think that that is the process of laying aside yes sir Yes, Mal, right, guy, yeah. hypocrisies, envies, you know, and evil speaking. It's the growth, yes, that does that. And if you, if you, if 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 your life is in such a way uh, prior to coming into to this body, and to this house, that you find that now that you have been and grafted in or that you have been built as a part of this house and you see that it's good come on now then your desire to grow yes will reduce these things yes that we are to lay aside exactly it's only and god's right word that uh -huh. can do we cannot do it in and of ourselves that, no. that it is impossible we are infallible outside of Christ, but oh. Christ you know what? One of through cool. us is Go what ahead. allows us to make these things so. So uh, so we, we, we are to get these, not just the word, but the revelation of the word. And become more solid. Become more solid. And, and, yeah. and like we've discussed before, uh, you can you can read this word and you can get some understanding of it. But when you hear God speak this word to you, come on, that is the revelation that 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 changes the heart, the mind, the lives of those who believe. Your your you you already have the faith. Yeah, we've all been given the faith, the measure, the measure of faith. Uh, it, it you can't be saved right. without the measure. God gives you that measure. That measure is is enough to move mountains. Yeah, and you know one of the things too I wanted to show that Brother Jackson, I, I also said the scripture itself actually said it, that you're a living stone. If you look at verse five. Yeah. Look at verse five, Brother Jackson. I put right it here, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was looking at my Bible as well, but uh, verse five, I'll repeat it since you brought it up. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. And that, and that says a lot, you know. It does. Um, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because you know I almost uh, actually missed it. Um, I probably yeah. would have caught up with it had I when, once I did my review. Right. But you know and that, that helps because you know the uh, when you when you're looking at when we look at ourselves at least when I look at myself if I'm being deemed by Jesus by the Lord as a holy priesthood like you said a small stone then that tells me that I need to represent in a different kind of way you yeah. know um, and I'm gonna be honest with you I'm like I'm like most folks you know my flesh you know does one thing and you guys know I'm kind of new on Facebook and so I'm looking at some of these comments that are on Facebook and stuff and and, uh, and I'm like, wow, you know, some of these, uh, some of these, uh, you know, quote unquote, church folk, <laughs> but uh -huh. they, they, they come back hard, <laughs> you know. And, they do. And and, uh, and I said, you know, that can't be from from the uh, from the spirit. And I get right. it. I, I really do get it. This is one reason why I don't comment a lot, you know. Yeah. Uh, but but that's what it tells me. But it also tells me that it, that we're going to be uncomfortable out there, Pastor. Oh, come and on, brother, man. you know, because when we, it, as it says, hey, for my sake, you, you know, we're gonna suffer. We're gonna suffer when we go out there and try to tell people or 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 operate in according to the to the spirit. And that's just something that we have to take upon ourselves joyfully. That's a burden that uh, uh, we're not necessarily, at least me, I'm not yeah. used to doing on a daily basis in these times that we're in right now whether you whether it be COVID, whether it be the economy whether it be you know black lives matter um basically it, it, it at some point in time you know the the, the that small stone's got to stand up you come know? on bro hey and, look uh, matter of fact if you look at the uh the second set of slides watch this that lies of what you just said since you can really leave anyway, what, what's that say? <laughs> it's here, out of verse eight, out of verse eight, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, Come being on. disobedient, uh -huh. to also they were appointed. Mm -hmm. Yes, you just said it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But ye are also, but ye are a chosen generation, and this is what you like to say all the time. A royal priesthood. Come on now. And a holy nation. Come on. A peculiar people. Woohoo! That we should show forth the praises of him, Lord Jesus, who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Amen. Woo! Which had not attained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And yes. that mercy is so gracious. Come on. It says here, dearly beloved, I, I beseech you as a as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. And that's kind of what we, we've been talking about. That that yes, war is, is, is there. The flesh is enmity against God. And in verse 12 it says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they by your good works, amen, which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Amen. Amen. It, uh, that, that tells me is that there's, 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 there's going to people, there's going to, even there's people that stumble at the word, brother Addison. You, you see that? I, I like the fact that even people stumble at the word, you become a rock of offense. Jesus, they be, they, you know, back when you saw the Sadducees and Pharisees, when Jesus walked this world, they stumbled at the word of God. They stumbled at the word and became offended. But the fact I like is that what we are is that we're chosen. That you know, Chris, we're chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, and we need to act according to that and still bring forth the gospel and the truth and confront the truth. You know, we, we don't supposed to sit there and allow the, the uh, and Chris, before you came in, we were talking about that one day, I believe we're going to have something similar to what happened in South Africa. Uh, uh, so I guess it's called a reconciliation board. Is that what happened in South Africa? What, what was that thing they had? Yeah. Yeah, yeah where well, they brought the people who committed offense uh, against them and they were able to speak what offense uh, that was acted against them to the person who did it right you know and the person 
would would apologize or, or whatever or, or not yeah. you know say i don't remember you yeah. know but but i i apologize yeah I, that, that that is a healing process even if the person does not accept the fact that they they actually committed the atrocity the healing for the person who received yes. the atrocity is there yes. but the opportunity for the person to commit who committed the crime or the atrocity is also available to them if they so accept it. right right you know and i think that's all that was an awesome uh form of healing yes for those people you yeah. know that they just actually just forgave them as long as they acknowledged that they you know that it was there or at least heard it yeah and then i think and i think that what god is saying and i think that's a level of civility civility where we, we, we look at ourselves and analyze the things that need to be corrected or addressed you know because we have to do that one day that's going to happen one day, the, we're thinking, Chris, that one day those people are going to sit there, we're going to have, uh, we're talking like we saw the Shade of America, great, uh, that guy United, that does CNN on the United Shade, Shade of America. Of America. And, and one of the ones I was, that caught my attention was, some young man was sitting in the, on the bench park, and he was confronted by a police officer who killed, shot 14 times. The, the, the reconciliation piece, I don't know about reconciliation, but the addressing was, when was that person a threat to your life, Chris? And when did it become a, a uh, homicide? When you, after the first shot, second shot, was it justifiable? When was the justification ended and atrocity began? And, and Pastor, the guy had to be up close because think about it. You shoot somebody 14 times, uh, most of the time when these police officers shoot, they miss. You know yeah. what I mean? So if you shoot somebody 14 times, you got to be up on them. Something is wrong. I mean, that's that's personal. I mean, like, even in the movies, we see people may shoot somebody two or three times, right? Uh -huh. with, you know, mm -hmm. they get one headshot and say, make sure that joker dead. 14 times. Something has to be wrong with you. Well, wow. it's it's amazing because uh, here lately I've been I've been trying to understand it, uh, and it's sad that that I this is something that I'm, I'm I think about. You know, when I think about thinking about it, it's sad. Yeah. Uh, but what came to mind is, and we've all been in the military, you know. So when you're you're deployed to go to war, which is no different than these officers are deployed to go out in the street to yeah. protect and serve, that's no different than the military. They're sent out to protect and serve the uh, the United States, yes. you know, uh, uh, or the people who who that who they were chosen to go out on on behalf of, but. In my mind, if the military can be given an order and then trained to follow orders to where they cannot shoot unless fired upon, and even sometimes then they're not able to to fire back. Yeah, yeah, the rules you of know? engagement. And yet they know these people are there to kill them. Yeah. And they can be around them. Yeah. And not shoot them. Yeah. 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 And yeah. when they do engage, they engage with a like force. Yes. You know, enough to overpower the enemy, but not, I mean, but we can always just utterly destroy. Right. A people with, with, with our, our military, but we, we we send out a force that is just strong enough to dominate mm -hmm. the the adversary. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you can always just go in and just yeah. bomb. Yeah. You know, just just completely just destroy them. But we'll send in troops because they are troops. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if they have aircraft, we'll send in our aircraft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we 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 only do enough force to eliminate the threat. Right. Or to overpower the threat. Okay. So I look at that. And I look at the danger that these people are in. And I know that in the military, if you're behind cover, you're not worried about people shooting at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see these cops with their video, they're behind cover. With their guns drawn at a person who's not even drawing their weapon at them. Don't even have a weapon. Sometimes yeah. don't even have a weapon. Right. And they're hollering all these different commands, four or five different commands. Some of them uh, are, are completely opposite than the others. Yeah. So if you do one, you know, it's the opposite of another command. And so to me, it's designed to give them the permission yeah. to do harm. Yeah. But this harm that they do now is not to apprehend. It is to eliminate all paperwork, all pro due process. Yes. You know, like I said, it's, it's the court system is involved in this because the courts are overrun. So let's just kill them. And then we don't have to deal with all the paperwork and the time spent and money that is spent in the courtroom. So you get back to these people who are police officers who are hiding behind cars, buildings, you know, structures with their weapons drawn on somebody who, let's just say they have a weapon, but their weapon is at that person's side and they'll command, command, and then they'll give them just enough time for somebody to, to to holler out all these different commands to this person. And if that person doesn't comply, comply even though nobody's in danger, because yeah. they're hidden behind structure and everything, one of them shoots, and then they all start shooting. And it's not just enough shots to where they hit that person. Right. Someone will hit that person, that person will fall, and they keep shooting. They unload their weapons, all of them. Yeah. So there is no force to take the person down. The force is to take the person out. And, and but you know, you know the thing about that. I was looking at the fact is that, and I think Chris agreed. This fourteen times. I'm just using that one just an example. Fourteen times. That 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 that's beyond taking a person out. That that's something else going behind that. And Chris, one of the things I wanted to show you was that if y'all look at it, one of the things that we're gonna to have to do eventually is verse twelve. See verse twelve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. That whereas they speak against you as even doers, that they may by your good works, which you shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Is is I think one of the things I don't think they don't think they're being honest. You know, we have to be honest about it, but I think that's the issue. When you said 14 times, Chris, what's what part of being honest about that killing? Is um, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I, all right, like I say, I, I saw the uh the, that Shades of America about the them interviewing about the fort the guy got shot fourteen times. Yeah. And like I said, the scenario in which that came about didn't even justify him yeah. shooting one time. Right. But yeah. you know me, you know how I look at things. Like you said, that's systemic. The system is made, well, like Brother Addison said, the system is made to do that. And see, like you say, with uh, verse 12, the problem with that is they perceive themselves as the other person talking to us as Gentiles. That's what the problem is. The system to flip the whole thing back. Right. They, they, they think you didn't even saying? do it. Right. That's, yeah. that's what the problem is. And, and you know like what? Said, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. No, you, you go ahead. That, you, you agree? I agree because I noticed one of the things that came out of that, that show was a fear of losing something. Did you did you catch that part about? It's like it's a fear. 
that I'm going, you're taking something from me. I, I, you remember yes. that one reporter, uh, she was half white, half black, and she was mm -hmm. crying about the fact is of a child coming into this world. And there's a group of people being taught to try to protect something and that you are a threat to that something. Based on color. That they have, yeah.